More. 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 <laughs> Hello, I'm Hannah Hart, and this is Edible History, the show where we make sure the taste of history is no longer a mystery. Today, we'll be exploring the magic behind the making of miso soup. Here's the thing. I love soup. I want soup for lunch. I want soup for dinner. I want soup for breakfast. If I could find a contractor to install a soup fountain in my house, I would do it. And one of my all-time favorite soups is miso soup. But how far back does the history of this super soup really go? To give me the scoop on this soup, I'm talking with Jane Matsumoto and Yoko Maeda Lamb from the Japanese American Cultural and Community Center in Los Angeles. What's the overall mission of the JACCC? It was established in 1971. The first and second generation Japanese Americans really dreamed of finding a permanent place where our cultural arts can be shared and kept for generations to come. Yoko is one of our instructors that really attracts a diverse crowd. We welcome those who really have an interest in Japanese culture. We have a very broad range of people who take classes at JCCC. Can you tell me about the type of classes you teach? I'm teaching a uh, Japanese fermentation class, how to make a miso pasting or tsukemono class. How long have people in Japan been eating miso soup? It's actually probably started from the miso paste and from China about uh, seven centuries. It evolved from what it was historically, a much more rudimentary soybean paste into a more sophisticated product where it could be consumed by warriors, the samurai, in the field. And it was a very flexible food product that offered protein sources and very easy to make. So was the miso paste always used as a, a soup base or was it used as a paste? Like you could just eat the paste the and eat earlier eating. people eat just the paste with a rice bowl. Oh. So can you tell me about the evolution from a miso paste over rice into having it as miso soup with water? Over time, Japanese are making stock also, we call it dashi, and dissolving the miso paste in the dashi really enhanced its flavor. So when did people start making miso soup into more than just a broth, adding the green onion or the tofu? It probably evolved from the Edo period. There was a large population to support. People started to make a more robust soup. So help me understand. It, it sounds like this is a very time-consuming process, but as far as I can tell, I can make miso at home by opening a little packet and pouring it in some water. <laughs> right, now the technology has advanced where you can really wholesale make lots and lots of miso. But historically, miso was made by hand. You would take the beans, the fermented beans, and you would literally have to hand grind it. That process has now evolved where it's automated in a machine. The thing that hasn't changed though is the fermentation time. Thank you so much for being here and answering these questions. I am so excited to learn how to make miso paste from you. Yes, let's do it. To make sure my miso doesn't end up so-so, Yoko is going to be joining me in the kitchen. First the ingredients here. Oh. Can you tell what is it? Uh, I'm gonna guess it's a dried soybean. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but it doesn't look like dried soybean. I didn't know they were so circular. I have to wash and soak it overnight, and then we're gonna cook. Oh, that's a soybean I know and love. Yes. And how do you determine it's cooked well or not? You use your two fingers, press it down. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so we take yes. it and then we squish it. Oh, so that's it? That's it. Done. Soybean paste. <laughs> <laughs> so drain the water well and uh, move it to uh, this bowl. Did this one? Yes, this is called the uh, suribachi. 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 And this is called the uh, surikogi. Surikogi? Yes. Suribachi? Yes. You want to try it? Yeah. Okay, I will show you. Can you hold it like that? Mm -hmm. And just to place it a little bit and stir it. I love that it has these edges, these ridges. You know, every mortar and uh -huh. pestle I've seen is smooth. Uh huh. Um, but these ridges really help break it apart. Yeah. Okay, so really? down and around. Mm -hmm. Teamwork. Yes. Yes. A little bit more? Yeah. 
They should have made the warriors do this. It makes them strong. <laughs> you want to do good. one more? Yeah. Well, Hannah, you're doing well. Oh, thank you. Very nice. Okay. Okay? Yes. Great. Great. Okay. Arigato. So now we pull all Pause. the paste off the sides. Yeah. And just wait a little bit. So next step is uh, we're going to use the koji. Second ingredient is uh, national fungus. This is the fungus? Yeah. It's rice. Rice. It's moldy rice. Yeah. <laughs> what? Can I touch it? Yeah, you can eat it. Really? Yes. No way. Yes. Okay. That's good. Bon appetit. Mmm. Sweet. Yes. You know uh, uh, brie? Mm -hmm. You know the, 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 the mold uh -huh. on top of brie? Mm -hmm. It tastes exactly like that. So <laughs> we to take uh, this koji into another uh, suribachi. Okay. Yeah. So if you have more koji, and it turns to a more sweet. So we are incorporating mm -hmm. the salt with mm -hmm. our koji carrier. Yeah. Because the salt is lighter than koji, so you always go, salt goes to the bottom parts. And you pull it up to the yes. top. So these are our two ingredients, but then the third ingredient that we end up using is really... Okay, so you add it little by little. Okay, here we go. Use a hand and a mix together. I'll take up my ring. Mm -hmm. Sorry, honey. Okay. Started mixing. Oh, it's good for exfoliating the hands. Cooking water, so a little bit. Mm. Okay. And uh, let me help you yeah. a little bit. Hannah did a mix very well. We are gonna next step making a miso ball. <laughs> Thank you for saying I did a good job. Yeah. You know, a student is only as good as the teacher. That's the truth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where do I get koji? I gotta get some spores. Oh, you get uh, no, from Japan. Oh. I do have it. You do? <laughs> Got that good stuff. <laughs> nice. We've made our miso bowls. What's next? Okay, so this is the fermentation pot. It's beautiful. Beautiful, right? Yeah. Uh, so usually people use in a preserve in a pickle and also the miso. Mm. Yeah. So next we need to sanitize? Yes. And uh, this is the vodka. Vodka? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> use these claws and the clean is the whole thing. Oh, so we want to make sure it's very clean. So we only want one type of mold, no bacteria. We Try. are controlling this environment. And then you take the one ball, mm -hmm. put it inside a pot, and using your knuckle, and place down like this. So you pack it down? Yes. Oh. And okay. then make it the layer. So the reason that we press down because uh, miso don't like it, the air. Oh yeah, you really want to pack it down, huh? Mm -hmm. We think about our enemies, now we pack it down. Yes. Okay, so we put on that lid. We set it aside to ferment. Mm -hmm. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh! <laughs> wow! wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's been, oh, months. Really? How long? Year. Year? Yes. Wow, you look great. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how it looks. Okay. dun 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 da Whoa! That smells like miso. It's miso. Ah, oh, this is amazing. You can see that the color has gotten so much darker. Yes. But then also, the smell. This smells sweeter. Yes. Wow, so what happens to make it go from this to that? Fermentation. <laughs> the end. So we've made our miso paste. Now it's time to begin our broth. Okay, so let me introduce our ingredients here. Mm -hmm. The black thing is the kombu. Kombu. Yes, it's dried kelp. Ah, Good. smells like the ocean. <laughs> now, all around here, you can see it's a white powder. It's not dust, okay? Mm. This is a umami flavor. It's the glutamic acid on it. Oh, so the white dust is what you're looking for. This is what brings out the umami. So, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so we need to soak kombu a while, at least in 30 minutes. I, I usually do it overnight. Good night. Bye bye. And then it comes here. What is that? <gasps> so this is the bonito. Yes. Oh. I heard it's the hardest fermentation food in whole world. This is putting the nido in bonito. 
Well, it looks like a piece of wood. Yes, yes, yes. Think you hear that? So how do we get the bonito from this to that? Using this shaver, so. Oh. Would you like to try? I would like to. Okay. Okay. And then. Now let's open it. <gasps> bonito! Look, here it is. Oh, this is great. Can we eat it? Yes, yeah, sure. Delicious. Can I tell you something? I love bonito so much because when you put it on food or something warm, it kind of dances. Yes. Okay, so let's check the kombu here. Ah. It's already, the flavor comes and I take it out. Does anybody ever eat the kombu? We eat the kombu, but uh, today it's... No. No. <laughs> and then the, please put in all bonito. All of it? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. I turn on and I wait until they're starting the boiling again. Oh, so this ingredient is patience. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you like sports? Love to watching it. You do? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. What's your favorite sport? Tennis. Tennis. Mm -hmm. That's the one and, I don't uh, watch. And baseball too. Baseball I watch. Yes. I like baseball. Yes. You ever watch football? Mm, not really. That's cool. Oh, I see some bubbles. Yes, we turn off and the one started the boiling because we don't want to have flavor all gone. And the wait. And then wait. We just wait. So do you play tennis? Yes. Oh. I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> so, we've made our miso paste. Mm -hmm. We are waiting on the last bit of our dashi. Next step, soup. Our bonito has had some time to rest. Yes. What happens next? So we all the bonito take it out right now. Okay. The bonito doesn't look as pretty now. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. bonito. <laughs> next step is we're gonna add the miso paste on the broth. Oh, yay! Hello, darling. It smells <sighs> good, huh? It smells so good. So it's about the one scoop of these. A big scoop. Yes. Great. You don't want to strain yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you mix it with a chopstick? Yes, I can. After you added the miso paste, don't boil it too much. So here is the white blocks. It's tofu. Hi, tofu. So we just lightly cut and, and let me add it. And not boil. Just keep it warm. warm. This is the koji. Yeah, you can take it out now. Can you eat it? You can eat it. Can I eat it? Uh-huh, sure. Oh, shit. Who knew mold could taste so great? <laughs> so we've added our tofu, and next we're adding more so, so seaweed? Seaweed, yes. It's called uh, uh, wakame. So I'm gonna add it. This one here, and the end is uh, negi, green onion. Simply just Okay. Okay, so we turn off before the soup starts boiling. Mmm. And then we serve it. Ah, oh. and to think we're eating just like the ancient Japanese did. Yeah. So the last step is to sprinkle on some green onion. Yeah. Little bit of green onion, little bit of green onion. And then we finally get to eat. Moment of truth. Let's do it. Here we go. All right. Yoko, thank you. Yes. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. Otsukare. Otsukare. Mmm. How is it? It's good? It's so good. good. Wow, what do you think? You're, you're the expert. I love it, I love it. You can definitely taste that, that umami. I am such a huge fan of miso soup, and I've never seen it made from scratch. Mm. So this, is, this has been really special for me. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me today. If you guys are in LA and you want to learn how to make miso, make sure you check out the JACCC and take one of Yoko's classes. And let us know in the comments below if you would try making miso soup at home. Speaking of at home, Yoko, where do you keep your miso? Secret. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Edible History. People like Yoko and Jane help new generations understand ancient cooking and fermenting techniques and keep our edible history alive.